eyes to pray, you will pray with understanding. I'll be discussing very briefly the message titled, Wrestle for Change. Tell your neighbor that. Say it like a person ready to fight. You know, I, I'm a, 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 a fan, a wrestling fan. I've never seen any wrestler who comes to the ring looking so gentle. Not very many of them. Each time you see a wrestler or even a boxer, they are charged. Is that true? They are charged. Perhaps to intimidate their opponent. Maybe another reason for that is to communicate a message that I'm ready to conquer you. So please look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I am ready to wrestle for a change. In wrestling, you don't put your hand in your pocket for, in a wrestling. Do you put your hand in your pocket? I've never also, I've not also seen a, a wrestling a match where the people sit down. I've not seen any. So turn to your neighbor, fight for a change this year. And tell your neighbor you will experience a change. Now what is a change? A change is an English word which simply means to move from one state to another. But in the context of our discussion, the change that you and I will experience this year is to move from what has been good to what is better. And to also move from what has been unpleasant to what is pleasant. Someone here, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have no doubt at all, I see change coming your way. A positive change coming your way. A glorious change coming your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. So what do we mean by, what do we mean by wrestle for a change? It means to engage in the art of prayers and other spiritual weapons for the purpose of experiencing what is new, better, and greater. It's the art of engaging in a prayer exercise with other spiritual weapons and the aim is for you to experience a change from what is new to what is better and greater. You may not necessarily be experiencing anything that is unpleasant, but you have decided that the way things are with me, I needed a change for the better. If you believe that, say amen. The way things are with me, the way things are with my children, the way things are with my husband, the way things are with my wife, the way things are with my family, I need something better. And if that is your desire, then you engage in a spiritual exercise, which include prayers and other art of spiritual weapons for the purpose of experiencing what is new, better, and greater. We have several examples in the Bible. Some of them I've captured here, but some of them I didn't. Now imagine what would have happened to Anna if she had not engaged in the art of prayer like she did. There are some things that are not happening in our lives, not because God had not planned them for us, not because they are not possible, but because perhaps we are too lazy or ignorant of the fact that there are things that cannot happen until you make them happen in the realm of the spirit. Ephesians 1 verse number 3, it said, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. But you know, when your blessings remain in the heavenly realm, for example, when a prophecy is given to you, it reveals what has already happened in the heavenly realm. Are you there? Are you there? So when God revealed things to you and then you saw it, now let me use the example of Joseph. God told Joseph or revealed to Joseph, he saw his brothers bow to him. He saw himself in the place of honor and royalty. That was, already, that was only in the spiritual realm. Now, you know, when God revealed things to you, you see your wedding ceremony took place. Are you still with me? You saw it, prophecy came, they confirmed it. That has not automatically translated into its manifestations. For some of you, you know in your heart that I think there is something about me that is unique. There is something about my life that has not yet manifested. You know that you shouldn't be in the level that you are in. You know that certain things that are happening in your life should not be happening. Yet, you seem not to be bothered or to inquire, what can I do? Oh God, you have said I'm the head and not the thing. But I still see myself experiencing uh, things that suggest that I'm the tail or at the bottom. You said I'm a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. But I find myself in the valley. 
You said I'm a lender, not a borrower, but I'm owing here and there. You said I'm, you know, so when all of that is your thought, then you will decide within you that I'm going to inquire from the Lord. And one of the ways you inquire from the Lord is by praying, and the Lord will direct your path. That is why I said, do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. For me as a person, if you are still with me, say amen. All the mistakes and the setbacks I've ever had in life, they are as a result of me not calling upon the Lord and being patient to hear him before I make a move. And by that experience, I've learned that whatever I do, I must experience one test. And that test is the test of peace. The test of what? Of peace. If I'm not at peace, I will not. So sitting here this evening, you might be in a position right now where you are tired of the status quo. We are told that Anna said, enough of this. My husband keep encouraging me. Am I not better than 10 sons and give her double portion of meat? All of that is okay. But I think I need to carry my own child. Someone shout this year. Oh, come on. Shout it. Say this year. And we experience the change that I desire. So she... She took the bull by the horn and confronted that barrenness. And when she did, heaven responded. However, we are told that it was God who closed her womb. But when she rise up and prayed and then made a vow, because what led to the transformation or the termination of the barrenness of Anna wasn't just that she prayed. She prayed and she said to God, if you will give me a child, the first child you give to me, I will give it back to you. And heaven could not hold back. Lift up your two hands. I don't know what is the deal between you and God this year. God will honor your prayers. I don't know what you desperately desire. I don't know what it is. It may be beyond money. It may be beyond what medicine can do. It may be beyond what anything you have can do. I believe that as you engage in the art of prayers, even this evening and going forward, that change you will experience it in Jesus' name. Of course, we saw the outcome of Anna. Desiring a change, she got her change. Jabez told herself, or himself rather, I can't remain like this. I need a change. I can't keep living the life that, you know, I was, uh, you know, I wouldn't say privileged now, the life that I was born into, a life of pains, life of sorrow. The mother had to even name him sorrow or pains. Jabez said, no, enough of that. Lift up your two so Shout and say, enough of shame and reproach. Shout if I say, enough of setback. Enough of sickness. I need you to have an aggression. Say, enough of barrenness. Enough of bearing an oppressive name. Enough of people describing my family with oppressive narratives. Are you versed in your spirit? In, now I'm just showing you from the Bible so you see that a change is possible when you desire to experience that change. Amen. We have several examples, like I told you, the woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, that would have been enough for her to lie down on her bed and be waiting for death. But when she heard that there is someone who has the power to do what medicine could not do, I don't know how she got to where Jesus was because the sickness has taken everything from her and money is gone. And please stay with me. Maybe she had to walk down. I said, this last time, if I perish, I'm perish. She walked down. I'm sure some of our friends would have said, why don't you just, don't bother yourself. Say, no, I will try this. Listen to me. Job said in Job 4 verse number 4, Job 14 4, verse 14. He said, I will wait until my change comes. Now, in the context of our meeting this evening, I will fight until my change comes. Someone declare that. Say it very well. I had a story many years ago of two individuals who mistakenly fell into a well, a very deep well. Amen. And it was an isolated area. So the possibility of anyone coming to rescue them was not there at all. So one of them, as he fell into the well, just sat down and said, here we die. The other one said, no. I would die here. <laughs> two individuals, the same condition. And the one who said, here we die, sat there just waiting for the days to go by, and then he would die. 
The one who said I will not die began to make attempt, began to make attempt and began to cry. The first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. Amen. The one who said we will die by the third day, he has died. Because he has given no hope for life. Hope is an oxygen that moves you from the unpleasant happenings of today to a positive change tomorrow. If you lose hope today, you will fall sick. If you lose hope today, you become weary. If you lose hope today, all you will be hearing is that die now, die now. As that one began to struggle and struggle, then heaven had to respond. By the fifth day, are you with me? This screaming, someone by divine providence was walking by saying, who is crying there? And came in and saw him looking tired. What happened? So I fell into a well. He had to call people from all the area and they rescue him. So what are you to learn from, what are the morals in that story? That never you get to a point where you give up or you are tired. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. There is a God in heaven who is watching you. It's not that he has not heard you when you cried the first time. But you'll be surprised that there are powers and forces that God wants you to come to a level so that when he brings you out, you will not be in doubt whether it is God or not. Sometimes God wants you to exercise and use your own energy, invest your money, do all the things, and he's watching. When all of that is over, you cannot turn to him and say, I lift up my eyes unto the heat. My help is not coming from my uncle in Canada. My help comes from him who is the maker of the heavens and the earth. To come to that conclusion, you may have tried so many options, but they all fail except the one who cannot fail. Lift up your two hands. 2022, God will come through for you. That is a prophetic word for you. 2022, God will come through for you. So, um, to wrestle for a change means you engage in the art of prayers. Engaging some other spiritual weapons because we are told in 2 Corinthians 10 from verse number 3 to 4 that the weapon of our warfare, they are not carnal. In other words, they are not ordinary. It is the weapons, they are the weapons of our warfare. Prayer is one of them. Fasting is one of them. Praise is one of them. Giving is one of them. And so on and so on. Forgiveness is one of them. Love is one of the weapons of our warfare. And the list goes on and on. And the reason why you engage those weapons so that you can experience the change that you desire. Open your hand like you are grabbing something falling on you. And that is a blessing. 2023 is your year to experience a glorious change. Genesis 32, 24 gave us an insight of how Jacob... Now listen to me. If there is anyone that shouldn't even wrestle at all, it should be Jacob. Because God has already spoken to his grandfather, Abraham, that his generation will be blessed. So with that, he could have just gone to sleep and say, well, I am from a royal family, the Abrahamic family. Child of God, it doesn't matter the promise that God has given to you. It doesn't matter the prophecy hanging on your life. There are battles to be made. Because you know why? The very moment the prophecy is released concerning you, all hell will be let loose. The moment Herod heard that a star has been born, the battle began. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what battle has been waging, waging or that has been that has been waged against you from conception to delivery until now. God is granting you victory over them all. But Jacob came to a point in his life where he didn't know to sit down and just watch things move from bad to bad, from bad to worse. If you, if you observe and you study the life of Jacob, Jacob just keep experiencing some setbacks, disappointment from what happened in his father's house. He went to his uncle's house, Laban. He saw the daughter of Laban, uh, Rachel, and you know, liked, liked her and told the father, I want to marry your daughter. And the father said, no problem. Uh, serve me for seven years. I'll give my daughter to you. He didn't know that his father was a schemer, a deceiver. And then seven years came. Jacob was ready to be the groom. Everything has been done. The price has been paid. Seven years to marry one woman. I used to hear. And then the night came. I said, I'm married now. And then when the woman was of age, Jacob was surprised that it wasn't the wife he labored for for seven years that was given to him. Imagine the disappointment. Jacob felt like, what is this? And angrily went to the father-in-law Laba and said, what is this? I told you it's your daughter Rachel I wanted. 
And the man being a crafty man smiled and said, well, you are too young. You are a small boy. In our tradition, the younger one don't marry before the eldest one. But why did you tell me that is meant for you? And Joseph be determined to make sure that he gets richer. He said, okay, what more can I do to get your second daughter? He said, another seven years. Ah, Jacob tried. Went another seven years. Fourteen years to get two wives. Now, as if that was not enough, Jacob began to do well in the business of Laban. Things were doing well. When Laban saw that Joseph was becoming more successful, hatred started again. The source of Laban began to hate on Jacob. Jacob had no option but to leave. He had to escape. Amen. Amen. Told his wife, I said, I can't stay here. Your father will not allow me to fulfill my prophetic destiny. And they ran away. His father alone ran after him. Eventually caught up with him. But before that day, the Lord had warned Laban. When you go before my covenant son, say nothing good or evil to him. Because touch not my anointed that do my prophet no harm. So when Laban met with him, he only said, you know, why did you tell me you were leaving and all of those things? He actually wanted to attack Joseph, but God went ahead of him. 2023, God is going ahead of your enemies. God will go ahead and fight for you. Maybe you are not connecting what I'm sharing with you. I said, God will go ahead of those who want to fight you and give you victory. Of course, Laban confronted Jacob and said, why did you have to carry my, my gods? Because his own God can be carried. I have to carry my household gods. Jacob said, no, I have my own covenant God, the God of my father Abraham and Isaac. I don't need to carry your gods. But what he did realize that one of the members of his household, who is his second wife, Rachel, had carried the gods of his father. That is why, listen to me very carefully, if you are not careful, you may be in church, you may be a Christian, you may even be a pastor. If you are not careful, you have carried the gods of your fathers in your heart. Now, how do you carry the gods of your fathers? When you carry the belief system of your family background, you have carried the gods of your family. And what will happen to that is that God cannot strive with gods. So what will happen to you is that you begin to experience certain things that are against what you should have been experiencing by the reason of your covenant relationship with God. So people carry the gods of their fathers by holding on to certain beliefs that are not in line with the will of God or the word of God or the ways of God. Of course, we saw what the outcome was. Rachel died. How? Because she lied and said, the gods are not with me. That would have been the day she would have been delivered from the premature death that came, on, came upon her on the day of her birth. Or the day of her delivery. Because the place she hid the gods was what led to her death. Lift up your two hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, every wrong belief that is not allowing you to express the full manifestations of your covenant blessings in Christ, I declare in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to disengage from them in Jesus' name. <laughs> gods can only have power over you when you believe in them. If you are sitting here, say amen. amen. Now, that battle was over. And then Jacob was, in his thinking, it's over now. I think I'm free at last. Only for him to be told, Israel is coming now from one battle to another. And when he heard his soul was coming, he said to himself, this is the end. What will I do? Fear gripped him. But he was wise, very smart. He told the first wife, you go this way. The second wife and the children, you go this way. Amen. Amen. Now, why did he do that? In case if he saw attacks, he can destroy one of this group and then the other one will escape. But he now came to a point where he had to be alone with God to deal with this matter. I'm tired of moving from one form to another. I'm tired of one disappointment to another. I'm tired of one relationship from, from one failed relationship to another. I'm tired of one failed business to another. And the Bible said to us in Genesis 32 verse number 24, maybe I should pray this for someone first. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are moving from a life of consistent battle to a life of permanent victory. Yeah. Battle we didn't hear today. Battle with police tomorrow. Back battle with car crash the other day. Battle with family crisis the other day. Battle with this one. Battle with this battle. Lift up your two hands in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will give you complete victory. 2023 will not be your year of moving from one battle to another. It will be your year of moving from victory to victory. From glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. So Genesis 32, verse number 24, the scripture says, So, can you read with me loud and clear? You don't know the implication of what that statement implies. Jacob was now alone with God. Listen to me, if you really need a change, you must learn how to be alone. 
Because a time of being alone with God is a time of isolation. It's a time where you receive revelation that can cause a transformation in your life. The crowd of our world, the crowd of our society. Someone was telling me today, of course, they planned a planned protest or whatever. I don't know how successful it was, but in the course of the protest, someone was mistakenly shot and shot dead. And when I heard, I said, somebody has already paid for it as a scapegoat. And I said, Lord, help your people. The devil is not a fool. He knows how to achieve his aim. He can set you up in such a way that if you don't have designment, you will fall victim to his strategies. Lift up your two hands. Your life will not be a scapegoat this year. Yes. The forthcoming elections, my brother, you must be wise. You must be smart. There are people Satan have said, it's through this election he will take their life. How? You go there and you see some talks wanting to snatch the boss. You don't have anything. You don't have any whatever. You are saying, you can't snatch it. Do your worst. They will do their worst. Nothing will happen. The best they will do is the governor to come and visit your family. And say he was a hero. But the children will not go to be a hero. I used to hear. Am I communicating? <laughs> Police stops you. And they say, come down. And it's rude. And you are in a lonely place. No, but even if somebody is with you, come down from the car. Say, open your boot. Open your boot. Where are your papers? See my papers. Are you with me? Where do you walk? You tell them where you walk. And they are necessarily delaying you. Just a police officer, I, I have, I'm going to walk. He says, shut up! Okay, sir. Because you don't have a gun. If you have a gun, you can't do anything. But police stop you to come down and say, for what? What did I do? Am I a criminal? He said, my friend, come down. You already know something has entered that policeman. He said, I will come down, do your worst. If you shoot me, you'll see what happens. If he shoot you, nothing will happen. Sometimes the Bible says we should not be ignorant of the device. All this we are fasting and praying. Satan is waiting, but he will fail. Yeah. He's waiting to just set you up with one thing. Say, oh, hey, oh. One day, a policeman saw me. My wife is away. He packed me. I was driving a car that wasn't actually my car. Somebody gave it to me, who is a car dealer. I should use it for a while because I didn't have a car at that time. So I was driving and he stopped me. And I parked. He said, you. You. This is how you be carrying your body. Like you are this. Is it not your house or in so, so, so place? Area I don't even know. I said, no. He said, you are lying. I know your house. The other day I was stopping, you drove past. I said, excuse me. I'm not who you are. He said, no. Don't pretend. I know you. I know you rich house. Come by a patrol here. I just kept my cool. This is not ordinary. Do you know how many people have been killed because of mistaken identity? Let me tell you a story, and it will humble you to know how to pray. Robbers were attacking, driving a particular car, the same color. And police radio that the robbers are so, 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 so car. The same, the same time that the robbers use that same car, somebody also was driving on that route with the same car, the same color. Is that not a setup? And police being told that they are heavily harmed. As they saw the car from a distance, open fire. The man, the wife, the two children perish. What kind of setup is that? How come is that day that he went out, that is the day that robbers used the same car, and after they have shattered the vehicle, they came close and saw a man, the wife, and the children. My parents used to pray one prayer for us those days. He said, the day the trouble will be on the road, may you not be on the road. Hey. I grew up hearing my parents say, the day trouble will be on the road, may you not be on the road. Hey. But I'm praying that the angels of the Lord will watch over you. Amen. The policeman was just accusing me unnecessarily. And I said, I, I don't know what you are saying. He said, go. So I drove away. The next day I was with my wife and my two children inside the car. He stopped me again. He said, now you again. This is your car you must. I've been telling you before. My wife was saying, who is this man? I said, this is the second time. So you don't know about this car? I will seize it. Now, be your house did that place? I said, God, for goodness sake, what is this? Try to explain, say, I bet they go, they go. I left. Demons can enter people. Then one day I was driving from a house, I think I was going for a meeting. I saw a vehicle just blocked me. I actually thought they are kidnapped. I said, What is this? He just jumped out. He said, But I'll tell you to, to number this car. You refuse to number this car. The next time I see you again, it was at that point the Lord said to me, Bind the power that has taken him captive. 
Do you know I did that? You know, some people you think you're ordinary. Just ordinary. It doesn't matter. Now. No, no, nothing ordinary. How can you be giving me the identity that is not my own? Maybe that man offended him. And that man is just somewhere. And you are saying I'm the man. Ah, lift up your two hands. No one will mistake you for another person. My explanation fell on a dead ear. But when I have dealt with the situation, because I knew where that was leading to, he saw me smile. He said, oh God, oh God. Uh, you know, I don't see the real man. You must see the real man. Because I'm not the man you said that I am. Anything that wore you, an image that will make people who should love you to hate you. Today, I need you to scream that amen like a thunder. Today, we destroy it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get back to our discussion. So, what exactly happened? Jacob was left alone. You need to come to a point in your life where you shut your door. You isolate yourself. I say enough of this. Enough of this. This is the beginning of another year. I can't keep, I can't, I can't keep going through the same circle year in year out. These tears must end. This barrenness must end. This setback must end. This rising and falling must end. This disappointment must end. Jacob was left alone. Wife go. It's not that I don't love you, but I have a battle to fight. Children go. Southern go. I need to stay alone with my God. I must make the most of this year. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I can't feel you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Jacob was left alone. Now, this has nothing to do with age or gender. It can be a mother saying, how can my children, none of their sins should be doing well? Children that I rejoice in giving birth to and went through pains in bringing them to this world, see the pain, see continue. No, oh God, a change must come. I don't know who cursed my children. I don't know who placed a spell on them. I don't know who said they will never do well. I don't know who said they will never rise to the top. I say, mother, he said, Richard, wait for your children. Richard, cry for your children. No, be doing makeup. This time, what was important to Joseph wasn't his costume. Enemy is coming. Esau is coming. He knows how cruel Esau is. Esau has no forgiveness. The Bible says, a man wrestled with him. I'm going to stop somewhere because if I go through my slide, we may not live here today. A man wrestled with him. Now, what was that? It was a battle of life and death. I told the man a few days ago. I said, your body language does not suggest to me that you are tired of the status quo. When a man gets tired, listen to this. There's nothing like, come on. When you get to a point where you said, enough is enough. <laughs> Your human strength will cooperate with you. And heaven will respond to you. Someone said, the fastest man is not seen about many years ago. He said, the fastest man is a man being pursued by a lion. That's why you will know that somebody can run faster than seen about. Because it's between life and death. When you look at the things around you, look at your family, look at your children, look at your business. And you say, come on, how long will I continue like this? How long will people keep looking down on me? And you make a decision. And you say, the change must come. Someone shout, my change must come. come. Lying down in hospital bed with your hand raised up, afflicted by the devil. And drip upon drip. And doctors are coming, looking at you, examining you, shake your head. You must come to a point where you say, this sickness... It's either you live now, amen, or I leave this hospital. Right from the time of John the Baptist, what happened? The kingdom of God suffered a violence. And what happened? The violent take it by force. A few days ago, the Lord was telling me about what the brother told me. And I had to ask for God for, for, God for forgiveness, for not listening to him. He said, Pastor, I need you to do something for me. I said, what is that? He said, I need you to put me on a program. And I said, I don't understand. I said, Pastor, I need a spiritual program. And I said, okay, I will get back to you. And for some reasons, I forgot. After a while, I heard that he had an experience. Now, he was not completely right to have come to me. But somehow, acknowledging that I'm his pastor, though he doesn't live here, was the reason why I said, I need a spiritual program. You think this 31 days just came because we want to be religious? If next year God said don't fast, we will not fast. I don't follow religion. But there's no way God will not tell you fast. So we're going to be waiting upon the Lord, trusting him, Father, when the years, what 
is your blueprint for us next year. Whatever he tells me, I will do. If it's 100 days, I will tell you. Because God will never tell you to do a thing without a reason. Am I right? I can't feel, am I right? Get to a point where you leave all this, you know, child of God, listen to me, to fast for 31 days. It's not, it's not picnic. You pray, you study, you do night prayers, wake up in the morning praying. It's not a job. Why are we doing that? That was only what Jacob did. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Can you pay the price for a change? Can you pay a price for the change you desire? Can you pay a price to terminate any form of barrenness? Can you pay a price, amen, amen. to destroy that sickness? People that pay those such price, when they come to a meeting like this, they are seated like the way all of you are seated now. They pay rapt attention. Lord, I'm here not to just be counted among the people, but I'm here to experience a change. I told the brother just, what are you doing outside? Some people just come to church. They just come to enjoy the socialization. Before I got to this point, sir, when I'm in church meetings, whether I am pressed, you don't know. Because what is pressing my life is more than the press. Are you still with me? What is pressing my life is more than the press. Child of God, you can't be between life and death and be going to use convenience and stay there, bring out your phone. Some people are jokers in life. They are jokers. They are not ready to pay the price. But whether you like it or not, you will pay the price someday. And if you don't pay the price, you will face the consequences someday. There will be no God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, why would Jacob have to pay the price of wrestling all night? Three reasons. One, he was tired of the way things were going in his life. For goodness sake, I am the grandchild of Abraham. I'm supposed to be experiencing the blessings of God. Not from one thing to the other. No! What was the second reason? The second reason is that he has a destiny to manifest the prophecies that God gave to Abraham. That is, if you have say amen. Your descendant shall be as numerous as the stars of the sky. Now, did you see what happened later? Stay with me. It was through Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel were better. Why would the 12 tribes of Israel be better through Jacob? Because Jacob was a man who was willing to take the bull by the horn. Listen to me. There's a prophecy on your life, sir. There's a prophecy on your family line. Listen to me. You will fulfill part. Your son will fulfill the other. Your children will fulfill the other. But if they are going to fulfill that prophecy, you have to pay the price. I told you yesterday how an elderly Abraham had to be circumcised. Look at the pains. Look at the agony. Look at the tears. The Isaac came. And then Jacob came. See how all of them paid the price. Fold your hands and say, well, God has said my children are a star. Don't forget there is an Herod looking to kill that star. The third reason why Jacob prayed, amen. amen. Are you still here? Yes, was the fact that he was mindful that a nation is in him. Because after he wrestled with the angel, what happened? The angel said, what is your name? What is it? What did he ask him? Ask your neighbor, what is your name? Now listen to me. That doesn't mean whether your name is Joseph or your name is Andrew. That is not the question. That's not the answer. The question, the answer is, what name are you bearing? That is not the name that resembles the destiny of God for your life. He said you will be called by a new name. The name that the mouth of the Lord will give to you. For example, I will ask you this. Did the parents of the valid man give birth to him and say, my son, your name shall be a valid man? No. Did the parents of the woman with the issue of blood, did they give birth to her and said, you will be called the woman with the issue of blood. What change their name from their real name situations? Lift up your two hands. Today, you will no longer bear the name of a debtor. Yeah. You will not bear the name of a barren woman. Yeah. You will not bear the name of a shikla. Yeah. You will not bear the name of a failure. Yeah. So if you are going to move from the name that men are calling you, you know there are people, they call them some coded names. Payable when able. He said, who come by? So they say, payable when able, number one. 
If you check their notes, they wrote your name there. And your name is Rachel, but the name they wrote against you is payable when able, number one. That is not the name that you should bear. Your change is here. So the angel said, What is your name? And he was gladly and confidently said, My name is Jacob. Ah! The angel said, That is your problem. Your name was supposed to be Jacob. But how did that happen? He wrestled. He, you know, when he said, Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you know, I just love you. There are some prayers that can be prayed that way. But when you have a warfare, are you still here? Yes, sir. You are a member of your family. There is a name they are calling you in the family, Code Deadly, that you are not aware of. They are calling you that name, Code Deadly. They are mocking your husband. They are mocking your children. They are mocking your wife. They are mocking the work of your hands. And then you are very comfortable, relaxed. Say, so what is your name? Say, my name is Jacob. He said, because you have paid the price. Because you didn't give up. Because at some point the angel said, "This already be let me go." Jacob said, "Where? Well, what did I? What did you say? I should let you go where? Well. The only one condition will I let you go, unless you bless me. I didn't come to this point so that I can remain the same. I'm alone here in this battle because I need you to bless me. Unless you bless me, I will not let you go. Unless you change my life, you change my family, you change my children, you change my career, I will not let you go. And just say, please, say, please, where? I'm going to, see. There are certain things that will be happening in your life, you don't remember food. You don't even know where mirror is. One day I told somebody, said, I wish I could not, I, I would stop shaving. I wish I could pray, Lord, let my BS not go. Because they are telling you, you don't remember some things. Because it becomes a distraction. How can you have children and they are not doing well? And you are okay. It's not your fault. But it is your responsibility to cry on behalf of your children. Instead of calling their name, yeah, yeah, are they hungry? No, no, if you feed me, you are making things worse. One night, my wife was telling me we're having the, the, mid, uh, the family vigil. And she told me that, do you know that through the night we're praying? Confident we're just sitting down. He will get up. He will lie down. He will pray small. I said, but she was around where you were praying. I said, yes, that settles it. That settles it. Because that atmosphere is only a matter of time. You are planting a seed. She will rise up to her own self. Listen to me. Someday, someday, all of us go pray. I think I should use the common palace word. Last, last, all of us go pray. Because when she is not in her husband's house and there are some storms, she will remember how mommy used to pray. She will rise up. So even though she's not doing it now, you already set an example to her that when there are challenges, you rise up to pray. But if all that she sees you crying, I'm, I'm not supposed to marry your husband, your daddy, your daddy family, and which is a wizard. That is said she will carry to her husband's house. It's unless you bless me, I will not let you go. You must bless me. Now what does it mean to be blessed? To be empowered for a life of transformation. To be empowered by God. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful. And they just said, what is your name? Say, my name is Jacob. He said, no, 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 no. Your name is not Jacob. You were not supposed to be called Jacob. You were not supposed to be called a failure. You were not supposed to be called an invalid man. You were not supposed to be called poor. That's not your name. Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. And the battle end. And Jacob said, thank you. And move from there. But Jacob didn't move from there, having the same shape. Because the Bible said he began to leap. There are times, if there are no scars, you can't be a star. People look at you, your neck is getting longer, you are getting thinner. Stand in front of mirror, it's like you are like a skeleton, no problem. A time will come when you start telling your stories. This is not who I was, but I have to pay the price for me to become a father of many nations. But you know what happened? The miracle is that when Esau now saw him, because he has wrestled and asked God for a blessing, when Esau saw him, instead of Esau killing him, stand my friend, Esau gave him a hug. What happened? Because when Jacob wrestled, Jacob died, Israel came. So who Esau met wasn't Jacob, it was Israel. You know what? Esau told Jacob, 
He had known him as Jacob. Instead of killing him, he said, can I bless you? Because he has settled the matter with God. Will you be left alone to take a place of prayer tonight and deal with issues instead of waiting for Pastor Ojo to give you several prayer prayers that will make your life change? I don't know the change you need. I don't know what you are crying, God, crying to God for. Will you be like Jacob who say, Lord, bless me. And the Lord changed his name. Tonight, somebody's name will change. Yeah. Somebody's family will change. Yeah. Somebody's career will change. Yeah. Somebody's business will change. Yeah. Stand up like a fighter and begin to fight for that change. Can I hear the shrink, sir? Thank you. Stay with your keyboard.